Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take integrals of absolute value functions. I, I know you're watching this video because you already know how to take integrals, but you're probably not familiar with um, integrands that are absolute value functions or contain absolute value functions. So when the integrand is an absolute value function, this is what you do with it. And before I start, I would like to appeal that you hit the like button and then you subscribe because I noticed from my um, analytics that I looked at for this channel, most of the viewers are not subscribed. What's going on? Come on, let's do it. Okay, so let's get into the question. Um, you have to first understand that absolute value function has a, a consistent meaning. It simply means that what is inside? The argument of this function is either positive or negative. Okay, it could be positive or negative. So whenever you get a function like this, you want to quickly rewrite the function and say, so I'm going to say that x minus 3, the absolute value function, could actually be written as either of these two. So it's always a piecewise function because um, there are options. So it's either we assume that this is positive, so we say this is equal to x minus 3, and that's only true if x minus 3 is positive, it's greater than or equal to 0, okay? That's when you use this. Now, if it is not 0 and it is not greater than 0, so we're talking about being on the right-hand side of the number line, then you're saying that this expression is negative. But we need to finish this calculation, well, because we just want to know what x is. We want to narrow it down to what x is. We can see that it simply means that x is greater than or equal to 3, that's when you're going to use this expression because that's when this expression is positive, whenever x is greater than or equal to 0, I mean, oh, to 3, okay? Now, if this was negative, this is what you're going to have, negative x minus 3, and this condition applies when this expression is negative. It's just common sense, okay? So you say if x minus 3 is less than 0, strictly less than 0, or when x is less than 3. Okay, so you have to do this calculation. The basis of it is that absolute value functions are such that the argument could be positive or negative because if I told you that the absolute value of three is three, you would agree. If I also told you the absolute value of negative three is three, you would also agree. So you see that it's important for you to consider both options, okay? And know when to use it. So now that we have established the two functions, the two functions that are involved, we know that this becomes activated once you go below 3, and this becomes activated anytime you're dealing with positive portions of the function. So now let's rewrite this integral in terms of these two, and we got these answers because we wanted to know what parts of these limits, the upper and lower limits, will apply to either case, either the upper case or the lower case. So let me rewrite the function now. Let's get rid of this one. So now that I have this copied here, we're going to just rewrite this expression like that. So those are the two integrals we need to take. So this integral is the same thing as the integral. For now, let's avoid putting the lower and upper boundaries because it depends on which part we're dealing with. So we're going to have two portions of this. One is the top part, which is x minus 3 dx, okay? And then the other part will be negative, the integral of negative x minus 3 dx. So let's quickly put the boundaries. Remember that this point is when x is positive, so of 0. So this starts from 0. The, this part will always start from 0 if 0 would be the lowest point in this range that we're talking about. Okay, remember x has to be, uh, x has to be, oh, no, look at that. I already made the mistake. x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So the lowest point here is going to be 3. And then the upper bound is 5. This one is activated when x is from 3 downwards. That's lower than 3. So we're going to go from negative 1 to 3. So this is what you need to integrate now. And then you get your answer. See, I almost fell into the trap. Remember, it is not just from zero, the positive, even though that's what we wrote here. You have to go to the value of x and say, um, where does this start? This starts when x is 3 or greater than 3. So that's why you have to integrate within this range. So let's do our integration. This is going to be equal to, if we integrate this, we're going to have x squared over 2 minus 3x. Okay, evaluate it from 3 to 5. Okay, this minus sign can come out here. So I'm just going to do this integral. This is going to be x squared over 2 minus 3x. Oh, sorry, the value. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I brought out the negative sign, and then you're going to have this evaluated from negative 1 
to 3. Okay? Remember, you don't need to do plus C because we're doing definite integrals. So even if you did plus C for this, plus C, the two C's will cancel out. Oh, well zero out okay so now we just need to evaluate this well i don't want to spend time evaluating because the focus of this was to show you how to break this into two separate integrals and now i've been able to do that so if you evaluate this and evaluate this you'll end up with a 10 okay i don't think i want to do that but let's just do it for the first example but i'm not going to do it for the rest of them okay so the plug in this here five here is going to be um 25 minus watch this it's going to be 25 minus 9 over 2, that's the first portion here, I like doing it this way, and then this is going to be minus 3 times 5 minus 2 is going to be 2. Okay, that's the first portion, minus, this is going to be 9, and the square of this would be 1, so that's going to be 8 over 2, let me write it, that's going to be 9 minus um, 1 over 2, and then that's the first part, minus, this is going to be 3 times 3 minus negative 1, which is going to be 3 plus 1, okay, plus 1. And that's what we've got. So this is going to be 16 over 2. That's 8 minus 6 minus, this is going to be 4 minus, what is 4 minus 12? That's negative 8. Okay, is that correct? Yes, that's going to be negative 8. So you see that this is going to be 8 minus 6, which is 2. 2 plus 8 gives us 10. Okay, so the answer to this is going to be 10. Now, this part could be tricky. That's why I'm trying to avoid it. So you could do a good job here, and then when you're trying to evaluate, you make mistakes. You don't have to use my method, but I did that quickly so I could get to the answer. But I'm not going to be showing you the evaluation part in the next portion of this video. Okay, so you understand the concept here. If you're able to start correctly, you will get your answer right. Let's get to the next question. So if you look at this one, you see that um, it's the same thing, we have an absolute value function here. We have to make the same assumption that what is inside here is sometimes positive and sometimes, or at some point, going to be negative. Or was negative and it's going to go positive. So we have to separate both. So you're going to write this as positive. You're going to write this as x positive multiplying x squared plus 1 over x. That's the first portion. And this only happens when what is inside here is positive. So you say if x is greater than or equal to 0. That's what you're going to get. Okay, and oh, we can actually simplify this. So maybe I should simplify first, but you want to see that I did that. Okay, I'm going to move this away to the other side so it's at the end of it. But what's the other option we have? The other option is when this is negative, so it's going to be negative x into x squared plus 1 over x. And that happens when this is negative. But you notice that both of them will cancel out. So let me move this over to the other side there and see what it's going to look like after we simplify. So after we simplify this, we're going to get this is equal to this cancels this out. You just have x squared plus 1. And that happens when x is greater than or equal to 0. x is positive. Okay? That's the condition for this one. Okay? And for this one, it's just going to be the negative of it. It's going to be negative x squared plus 1. Okay? And that's when x is less than zero strictly. So those are the two conditions and that tells you what you're going to integrate. So we can say that the integral of the absolute value of x, x squared plus one over x, okay, and within negative three and two will be equal to, you have two um, integrals, one starting, one is going to be x squared plus one dx, uh oh, there's a dx missing here, I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to have dx here. Okay, so right there we have x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, and the other one will be plus the integral of the second option, negative x squared plus 1 dx. And what are the boundaries we're going to set? Well, for this one, it has to be anything from 0 up. So here it has to be from 0 to the upper limit, which is 2. And then for this one, it has to be anything less than 0. So from 0 down, so it's going to be from 0 down, from negative 3 to 0. Remember, these two will be the same. Okay, they're always the same when you do this. So now that we have this, let's just integrate. Okay, let's integrate first. We're going to have, if you integrate x squared plus 1, you're going to have x cubed over 3 um, plus x evaluated from 0 to 2. Plus, okay, this minus can come out here, so I'm going to change this to a minus, and then I integrate this. It's going to be the same thing, x cubed over 3 plus x evaluated from negative 3 to 0. Okay, now when you evaluate this and evaluate this and you put your answers together, your answer is going to end up being negative 22 over 3. Okay? So, 
this video is not to teach you how to evaluate this. You know, if you plug in zero here, everything is going to be zero. If I plug in two here, you're going to get eight over three plus two, which is going to be 14 over three. And that tells you that on this side, you're going to get a bigger negative number because you're going to be cubing negative three, which is going to be, oh, a very uh, big number, but you're going to be, it's going to end up being negative. Eventually everything becomes negative and then you have more negative, but that's what your answer is going to be. Okay. Now let's go to, so be careful when you evaluate this. You might want to put this in a jacket like this. Maybe that makes it better. Okay. Now let's go to the third one. Remember to subscribe. Okay. If you're learning anything new in this video, make sure you subscribe. Just give me a thumbs up. Okay. I need it. I need it. Let's go. For this one also, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say this is equal to a piecewise function like this, where we're going to say there was a time when this was negative and there was a time when it was positive. So remember that. So we're going to write two functions, x minus 1 over x plus 2 divided by when it was positive, it should be x minus 1. And remember that if it's x minus 1, it's going to cancel out this top part. And then what you have will be just x plus 2. And this only happens when x minus 1 is positive. Okay, so you say if x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, which simply means that x is greater than or equal to 1. That's the condition. You always have to end up with x standing alone. Okay, and then you go to the second one. It's the same thing. It's going to be negative. No, it's going to be x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 2 divided by negative x minus 1. Okay, you're going to say this was negative, and these two will cancel out, and you end up with negative x plus 2. And that happens if x minus 1 is less than 0, which simply means that x is less than 1. Okay, so now we know that 1 is the center of gyration. No, no, just kidding. Okay, so now let's write this as an integral, so we can say, therefore, the integral um, x minus 1 into x plus 2 over x minus 1 dx can be written as the integral of the first part, which is x plus 2 dx, okay, um, plus the integral of the second part, negative x plus 2 dx. Now let's choose the boundaries from what we have. We're supposed to go from negative 2 to 4. But we're gonna, this part takes the negative part because it's when x is less than 1. So it goes from negative 2, but it cannot go beyond 1. So it stops there. So this takes it from the beginning all the way to the end. And that's it. Remember, these two will always have to be the same. And these two will be the beginning and the ending, like you always see. Okay, so now that we've got that, what do we do? We just take the integral and evaluate. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, if we integrate this, it's going to be x squared over 2 plus 2x. Evaluated from 1 to 4. This minus can come out to be minus. If we integrate this, the same thing, it's going to be x squared over 2 plus 2x evaluated from negative 2 to 1. And I tell you that when you do this, you're going to get a beautiful number called 9. And that would be your final answer. Remember to subscribe, okay? And never stop learning. Because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.